Hey everybody, it's Jason Baja here, and uh, now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness world. So let me put on my plus five out of weapon smithing. Work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. All right, several people asked me in the last couple days, hey, what do you think about Connor Murphy's Puckable Physique? We're going to call it that because that's how he spelled it. Uh, I had never heard of it before. No idea. I know vaguely who he is. I'm not going to say, oh, I've never heard of that guy because I have because I covered uh, another video. That's where I learned about him where another YouTuber got arrested down in my home state of Texas here out in Austin partying out on 6th Street. They pulled a prank, got arrested. A uh, bit of a problem. Yeah, so, so I do know vaguely who he is. Uh, not unfamiliar with him there. Uh, so I looked into it. I went and looked at his ad and everything. I read the ad. Um, all right, guys, this is some ridiculous marketing, and I'm just going to call it like it is. I'm not saying the guy doesn't have good physique, because he does. I'm not saying the guy probably doesn't get some girls, because he probably does. Semi-famous YouTuber. Decent physique, probably making a little bit of money off what he does. Probably makes real good money off what he does. I mean, estimating his views, or is it what I know YouTubers make? Yeah, the guy's probably making $10,000 a month, at least. He's probably got a six-figure income off of his YouTube, right? So he's got six-figure income, decent body, seems to be an outgoing guy. I have no doubt in my mind that he gets girls, right? Anyone doubting that? Personality, money, and then physique is the icing on the cake. See, the problem is that what gets marketed to you guys is that you're taught that physique is the key. You know what? That's not true. No personality, no money, and a nice physique is not getting you anything. You might get laid a few times from it, but you're not going to be covered in girls all the time. Uh, that's just not reality. That's a myth that's been sold to you guys by magazines and even this sort of clever marketing. And that's all it is, guys. It's clever marketing. Uh, and one of the things that bothered me was that he even said in the little thing I was looking, he's saying, and guys who just do hours of cardio burning away all their muscle. Burning, doing cardio doesn't burn your muscle away. Doing cardio burns calories. If you're lifting enough and eating enough protein, doing hours of cardio just burns fat. Okay, it burns fat off of you unless you lose weight too quickly. If you're eating enough calories to not lose the muscle, cardio doesn't take muscle off you. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's the sort of nonsense you see in these bodybuilding magazines. Too much cardio. Oh, my God. Um, sorry, guys, but look at some of the hybrid athletes who are out there. Some of the guys Alex Viata works with. Look at Alex Viata. These are guys who are doing marathons and stuff, and they're probably more jacked than you are. Probably more jacked than any of you are ever going to be running marathons. Uh, so don't buy into that sort of nonsense. That's the first thing I caught that I'm like, wait, what is he trying to pull here? Um, and the other thing, too, kind of bothers me. He got a $37 ebook to tell you the secrets of, you know, how he gets his physique. But he has a YouTube fitness channel where he's supposed to be giving workout nutrition advice. So what, does he not give his real advice on the YouTube channel? Is he basically conning and screwing over his 900,000 subscribers? Like, is he lying to them and only the people who buy the book actually get the real info? I mean, is that what he's pulling? Because that's the only way this works. So he gives bad advice to his 900,000 followers who aren't paying him, but he's making a six-figure income off of them. Right? He's making a six-figure income off of them, at least $100,000 a year off the commercials they watch. But he's giving them bad advice. Ha, ha, ha. But you got to pay $37 for the real stuff. You serious, bro? Um, I'm sorry, that doesn't speak very well to you. I mean, if you got to sell ebooks on the same stuff that you should be covering on your channel, on um, workout advice and nutrition advice and everything, uh, that makes you kind of a con man. And I don't have a problem with the guy personally, but that's the way that strikes me. Why, why do you need to sell a $37 ebook and package when you're supposed to be giving this advice to your almost a million followers already? Isn't that what your channel's for, to help these people out who, who want to... Uh, achieve the results you're getting, right? So what in the hell do you have a channel for? Get rid of your channel and sell the ebook because you're clearly not giving the advice on the channel. That's like what it strikes me as. And you know, the thing is, it bothers me is that, yeah, it was. it's just some clever marketing going on. It's some fake marketing because I listened to his story. I watched the whole video. You talk about this girl, Ashley. Tells this touching story about the girl, Ashley, who was the most beautiful girl in school and he had a crush on her and he finally... When he hit, she was like his partner in a biology class. He asked her out on a date. 
Uh, then she sent him back an hour later. She said yes, and then she canceled on him, and he showed up at the date, the movie he was going to take her to with his other friends, and he saw this really ripped guy with an amazing body that all the girls were swooning over who could have gotten every girl there. He was in high school, mind you. All the girls were swooning over this guy. And then Ashley comes out of the bathroom and goes over to the guy, and they go into the movie together. And so he left and went over because he didn't want his friend. His friends were making fun of him, and he went over because he didn't want to see his friends cry or Ashley see him cry, and he went and cried in private. And, and you know, that's when he realized he had to really get into shape so that he could look like the guy who took his girl. Are you guys buying that bullshit story? Are you guys really buying that story? I wonder how many tens of thousands of guys paid $37 for an ebook after that bullshit story. That's not real. That's not true. <laughs> some chick cancels the date with him to go meet up with some guy there who he's never seen before, who must be new to town, who has the most impressive physique he's ever seen, and uh, steals his girl from him. Do you guys really and truly believe that story is real? And then, then that's why he realized he had to get in shape because the guy took Ashley from him. And he wanted to be like that guy so that he'd get any girl he wanted just like he could. All right, do you honestly think all the buff guys get any girl they want? You know what? I'm not saying physique can't help. Physique can be icing on the cake, right, when you've got more to bring to the table. But you know what? A lot of girls understand physique's temporary. They're going to consider that. A lot of girls, a guy who's too obsessed with his physique, uh, again, this is talking to plenty of women. This is not saying anything other than what these women actually say. When you talk to girls about this, because I run a fitness channel, I talk to a lot of girls about this stuff behind the scenes to kind of find out their views on this. Uh, you know the general view? A big chunk of women, probably over half of women, think that a guy who's too obsessed with his body is either number one, secretly gay, because right? there's a big tendency towards that. And I've known of girls who had that problem, who got with bodybuilders who were living that down low lifestyle. But I've known of a couple cases of this and it turned out they were really gay. He even got married to him or something, but he was really gay and didn't work out. Um, pretty common. And girls tell these stories to each other. There's a lot of stories of that stuff. Because a lot of guys who do obsess over training are in the closet. All right? So they think that or they think they're just a narcissistic douchebag. Not all of them had this view, mind you, but that is kind of the impression. Also, look at all the 10 out of 10s. You know, you bring this stuff up and people say, well, you know, but if you're going to get the cream of the crop, you have to have a really hot body. Really? Yeah, because Donald Trump totally has a really hot body. That's how he got uh, Meliana when she was a model, because of his hot body. I mean, if we use y'all's logic, you should want Donald Trump's body. Or maybe there's another factor involved there. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, you know, the fact that he's really rich and really outgoing. Kind of a good combination. Um, but you know what? Financial security actually gets you a long way. Being really outgoing will get you a long way with women. Look out there at the men you see who have a 10 out of 10. You call that 10 out of 10 heavenly blessed beauty trophy wife. How many of those guys look like a... a men's health cover model how many of them how many of them work out some of them work out at least half of them don't even exercise don't work out at all yet they got a hot chick married to a hot chick who stayed hot even after she married them how do you explain this other than maybe women don't care about physique and body as much as men do. We project onto them that they care about it like we care about it. Okay, That's men projecting. That's not reality. I'm not saying they don't care at all, but they care a hell of a lot less than you guys think they do. And most of the time when you see the really jacked guy who's getting girls, there's other factors involved. All right, you guys remember the whole Ziz phenomenon. Do you guys think Ziz got girls just because of his physique? You think that was the only factor? Now, people say, well, his confidence, well, his confidence was also improved by Trimbalone. Trimbalone affects the brain. It affects confidence. It can make you more confident. You a lot of trend. But, yeah, he had a good physique. He was extremely outgoing. 
he would show off and showboat in public, and he was in a party scene, and he was known to have lots of recreational drugs. You hang out at raves and parties and, and the party scene, and you have drugs on you all the time, that alone will get you girls. You go hang out in those sort of groups and you have an outgoing personality and you're really outgoing and fun, that will get you girls too. You really think his physique was, the, was everything that was the whole thing? No, there were a lot of other factors going on. Now, and guys will always say, well, you know, like what? I don't know, like how nice you treat women. Believe it or not, and I don't mean the classic, I'm a nice guy so I must get laid. You're probably not a nice guy if you think that way. See, if you think that chicks are like a vending machine that you put nice guy coins in and you earn credit towards pussy. If that's how you think it works, you're probably not as nice of a guy as you think you're. If you think a chick's just gonna sleep with you because you're a nice guy, you're not a nice guy. But women notice how men treat women. How they talk about their mother. How they talk about other women in their life. How they treat women around them. Women notice those things. Now, women with real low self-esteem might go for the total douchebag, but women care about how you treat women. All right, when you're trying to pick up girls, they see that, they notice it. At least the ones with any self-esteem do. Uh, your income helps. Yeah, being financially stable uh, is real important. And I can tell you right now, spending tons of money on eBooks and supplements to try to help you get a better body if you're not making good money is not gonna make you look more financially stable. But financial stability helps. Let's be honest personality, how outgoing you are. And now, a lot of guys will go, well, you know, what about all these girls I see with this total douchebag? You're wrong. Well, you perceive him as a douchebag. But the really hot chick who has it all together, who you see kind of going towards that douchebag, maybe you perceive him as a douchebag. Maybe there's some reason that he projects that around you or you perceive him that way. Do you really know the guy? And I'm not saying I don't know, haven't met some hot girls who are married to total assholes. All right, I've met some guys who really are legitimately douchebags. They're out there. But usually the chick is a total douchebag too. Now, the thing is though, back to the guy, how do you know what he's really like? You might perceive him as a douchebag. You might perceive him as an asshole, but maybe you don't know the soft side the guy has. Maybe this is a guy who when she met him, he was volunteering every weekend to a child's cancer unit of terminally ill children and going and reading books to them and stuff every Saturday morning and have been doing it for two years straight. Maybe he's a guy who every now once a year donates plasma, not plasma, but say um, bone marrow. I have a friend who did that, by the way. A good friend of mine did bone marrow and I had to give him his injections for it. It's pretty rough on you. How do you know that he's not a guy who donates bone marrow and stuff and she knows this and knows it's deep down, this is a guy who's willing to make some sacrifices to help strangers or to help children with cancer. All right, you're perceiving him as a douchebag. You don't know what the guy's really like. So when you make that assumption, well, how come this douchebag has this hot girl? Because maybe he's not really a douchebag. Maybe he's actually a really decent guy and you just don't know about it because you don't see that side of him. You shouldn't make those assumptions. But the thing is, at the end of the day, marketing and ebook just to help guys when you already have YouTube channels where people can get all this same advice and information for free to help them get a puckable physique, come on. You've got to be kidding me. And especially when the guy's already got a channel, he can't just put it in, in videos and make, I don't know, another $50,000 teaching guys on YouTube how to do it uh, who aren't having to dish out and buy an ebook. Are you serious? And I would never pay money for a program anyways. I always tell you guys, why are you guys buying programs? The best programs are already free. Don't ever pay for a program unless it's specially written for you by a qualified strength and conditioning coach. All right, nobody else. It needs to be a qualified strength and conditioning coach. If not, don't buy it. And if they're not custom writing it for you, don't buy it. And if you've been training less than two years and you're buying a custom physique, a fool and his money shall soon part because you don't need a custom physique. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.